Imagine fighting so much that you no longer feel fear, adrenaline, or even anger. Every punch becomes as routine as breathing, and violence stops seeing violent to you. For some, that's a sport. For others, it's a way of life. But what happens when your body, mind, and emotions get used to chaos? Today, let's look at the science behind getting used to fighting. When you fight, your body becomes a survival machine. It adapts in a moment. Your brain releases a storm of adrenaline and cortisol. Fear, pain, empathy, they all shut off, at least temporarily. But when that repeats every single day, like a professional boxer, an MMA fighter, or even a street brawler, the body starts adapting. The amygdala becomes less reactive to danger. The brain learns to stay calm under extreme stress. What used to be panic is now routine. Long term, muscles harden, reflexes sharpen, and the skin around your ears can literally deform. Yeah, that thing you see on fighters? It's called cauliflower ear. The brain, though, isn't so lucky. Every impact, no matter how small, can alter neural connections, modify memory, emotion, and even how you feel pleasure or empathy. Over time, some people don't fight to win anymore. They fight because without fighting, they don't know who they are. Phase 1. The body learns to take it. Everything starts with pain. The first time you get hit, your body panics. Muscles tense up. Breathing cuts short. And your brain? thinks one thing, survive. But repeat it enough times and your body starts understanding the game. The skin gets tougher, muscles learn to absorb impact, nerves stop reacting the same way. Boxers, for example, develop microcalluses on the facial nerves, a kind of natural anesthesia from training. Pain literally just becomes information, a message that the brain translates into strategy. What's interesting is it's not just the body adapting, the nervous system does too. Every punch reinforces connections between the amygdala and motor cortex. Basically, you learn to respond with precision, even under fear. And that changes your reaction threshold. Where others freeze, you attack. Your body stops distinguishing between fighting and surviving. Phase 2. The brain goes cold. After a while, something deeper changes. Fear. Breathe in. That's fear. That feeling that used to make you tremble now shuts off. Your amygdala, the brain's alarm system, starts reacting less. The limbic system readjusts. Your body doesn't dump the same amount of adrenaline anymore. And your heart doesn't race as fast. You literally become harder to scare. For a professional fighter, that's gold. You can think clearly while someone's throwing punches like a tornado. But for a normal human brain, that has a cost. When fear disappears, part of your empathy goes away. Your mind starts seeing violence as normal, even as a tool. And that's where boundaries blur. Because if your brain learns that solving things with your fists gets results, then impulse becomes habit. Your prefrontal cortex, that part that evaluates consequences, loses ground to the reptilian system, the one that acts without thinking. What used to be an instinctive reaction now becomes identity. You're not someone who fights, you are the fight. Phase 3. The mind breaks. Here's where something disconnects. The brain, to protect itself, starts shutting down certain emotions. Fear, guilt, sadness. Everything becomes background noise. And with each punch, small neural networks deteriorate, especially in areas like the hippocampus and frontal lobe, the same ones that control memory, judgment, and self-control. In boxing, they call this punch drunk syndrome, a form of chronic encephalopathy from repeated micro-impacts. In simple terms, it's like your brain ages prematurely, mood swings, slow speech, memory loss, even aggressive behavior outside the ring. And the most dangerous part, many don't even notice until it's too late. Outside the sport, things get darker. People who fight in the streets for survival or have it develop a kind of inverse PTSD. Instead of running from danger, they seek it. Their body needs the adrenaline dump to feel alive. Without it, everything else seems boring, even empty. Humans can get used to anything, even violence. And when that happens, you don't react like a person anymore. You react like a conditioned reflex, a machine that only knows how to hit before getting hit. Just to give you an idea, how many fights does it take to get used to it? One to five fights, you might notice decreased immediate anxiety and gain some confidence. The body starts not triggering the alarm as much. Several weeks to months of regular fighting, like two to three times a week, there are more marked changes in emotional responses. 
less fear, reduced cardiac and pupillary response, more impulsive behavior in conflict situations. Years of frequent fighting or accumulated micro impacts to the head, risk of chronic encephalopathy, memory alterations, emotional control issues, aggressiveness. Here it's not about quantity, it's about accumulation of impacts over time. The human brain clearly isn't designed to take punches as part of a routine. Muhammad Ali, for example, ended up with chronic traumatic encephalopathy, a degenerative disease caused by the blows that stayed with him until his final years. Freddie Roach, one of the most respected trainers in boxing, has Parkinson's for the same reason. And it's no coincidence that many ex-fighters end up with personality changes so marked they seem like different people. Some become impulsive, others depressive, others simply unpredictable. Mike Tyson once said that without fighting, he didn't know who he was. And the most disturbing part, he said it with absolute calm. On the street, the effect is different. No refs, no helmets, no rounds, just ego, rage and reflexes learned through getting hit. There, fighting stops being a sport and becomes a language, one where every punch is a word and those who speak it best end up more alone than undefeated. Getting used to almost anything, pain, fear, chaos can be both a strength and a curse. Because when you fight so much you don't feel anything anymore, you stop defending yourself from the world and start defending yourself from yourself. The body learns to take the hits, but the mind starts needing them. And that's the real danger. Even violence can become a habit, and habits over time become identity. So be careful what you practice every day, because one day, without even realizing it, that's what you'll be.